Welcome back to Impact Show. I'm here at ViewSonic headquarters. If it wasn't for ViewSonic, there's no way that Impact would have a heartbeat. They were our partner last year. Jeff, you were so proactive in seeing the pandemic and how it was taking over our conference, which we'd always done in person in Las Vegas. And you were so kind enough to host us in your spectacular headquarters that you had just remodeled. The timing could not have been better. And we went from having 400 people in a ballroom to winning the Guinness World Record of the largest virtual marketing conference ever. It was due to ViewSonic's partnership. It was due to us giving away a Tesla and over $200,000 in merchandise, including several ViewSonic displays. Speaking of displays, we've gone through a crazy revolution in life, in business, in so many different things. Jeff, you have had the foresight of seeing how the pandemic has entered business. You look at enterprise, you look at government, you look at education. The collaboration that we all do now as humans has completely changed. And technology has been in the center stone of all that. Can you tell us a little bit about the displays and everything going on at USonic and kind of your thoughts around that? For sure. Thank you for having us back again, Sinan. We, we really enjoyed last year and how we evolved through the pandemic. And I'm happy to report that the things that we announced last year, uh, our education for hybrid learning, our, our view board solutions for collaboration in the corporate space, our optimization for remote working with our desktop workstations has really been very, very successful in the last 12 months. Uh, we've been able to grow our market share. We've been able to deliver on the promise of making teachers uh, more effective as they were teaching, right. uh, to make business people more collaborative in the office and out of the office. We're very, very proud of what we were able to accomplish, and they were just not words on a piece of paper. We actually put them in place. We made great strides last year. And this year, as the pandemic seems to not want to release its full grip, right. unlike what we forecasted last year, we are seeing another evolution of our solutions. We've learned from our partners, we've learned from education, we've learned from corporations on what this evolving remote and hybrid and, and uh, variation in how people are working, mm -hmm. what their needs are. Right. So we're now adding more products, adding more features, adding more modules to our software solutions, as well as bringing in more products that allow all sorts of different environments and mm -hmm. scenarios mm -hmm. to build, right. uh, build their business in a manner that will be optimized for this business and office anywhere, anytime that we're dealing with as we move through phase two or phase three of, of the pandemic, depending on how it looks. And some of the benefits coming out of this scenario are how business can optimize themselves, mm -hmm. how education can optimize themselves in a hybrid environment. Right. And it looks like this hybrid environment is here to stay, so pandemic or not. And, and let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, most of our audience are enterprise or business owners, small business owners. And in many ways through the pandemic, the display became their primary node. Uh, they were doing Zoom calls through it. They were doing gaming through it. They were doing their work through it. Tell us about how it's a multiverse world in the display and how ViewSonic was there at the perfect time and how has the product evolved since last year? Sure. Um, the, the first thing that we ended up doing, and it started back five years ago, and with a little bit of luck and a little bit of timing, that evolved to some solutions that were perfect for our remote and hybrid scenario um, a year ago. Right. And we have added uh, content to our solution models through our MyViewBoard software mm -hmm. so that teachers and corporations have access to content. They can import content into the platform, leverage that platform across multiple different software of enterprise's choice, which right. is agnostic. And that's a very important piece of this whole thing. As it relates to the desktop, moving some of our products all 4k type c usb to make the the home office and the work office easy to connect and dock mm -hmm. without having to buy a docking station right so that's really super when you can be easily uh, moving into a hotel station environment in the office to leverage these kind of monitors and the ability for us to have so many different size selections we've found in the last year that people have increased the size of the monitors mm -hmm. that they're buying and putting on their desks. Right. They're buying curved now as much as they're buying flat. And they're still, however, putting two monitors on their desk. Right. 
because the desk space and the multiple windows is so important. So now when you're talking about being on a Zoom call, right. you have your Zoom on one screen right. and you have a lot of your windows on another screen. And now what you're having is a much more productive work environment when they're talking and collaborating as well as sharing or not sharing their screen. Right. And one of the big topics of Impact 21 is really the return to work. And so many of us are in this hybrid environment where we're working from home, we're working from the office. One of our, our partners at IMA is a prominent architecture firm. They outfitted their entire enterprise with Busonic displays, and they actually use that as an incentive to get their workforce in the workplace. Can you talk a little bit about how hybrid work environments work around a display solution? Because if you've got one at home and one in the work office, do, do they interoperate through your software? The software, my Viewboard software, is a collaboration platform. The displays that we optimize for this phase of return to work right. um, have a, a slightly different play than the my Viewboard software itself in that we have been developing our return to work. So while we modified our experience center last year for Impact 20, right. this year we're in the process of modifying our whole entire office right. to be more uh, employee friendly, brighter, uh, more open, right. and along with that, along with the fridge and the stocked uh, bar, etc., it right. comes bigger screens, yes. better screens, right. Type C USB on their desktops. So their desktops will be much more advanced than they were before, even though we're a monitor company. Right. They now have the ability to dock and sure. undock and have screen landscapes that are two times bigger than what they were before. 100%. So as ViewSonic is trying to help businesses leverage displays for productivity, for ergonomics, for uh, uh, just enjoyment of the workspace where you can stand up or sit right, down, sure. um, enjoy their environment, right. um, the display is very centric to productivity and enjoyment. And you know, like uh, our, our partner, they incentivized their employees by saying, hey, you're gonna come into the office and you're gonna have two 4K right. big screens on your desk, plug in your monitor, pl unplug, go work where you wanna work, and the idea is to make their space easy to connect, mm -hmm. easy to work from, wherever it may be. Right. Office, anywhere, anytime. Let's talk a little bit about education space. Uh, I have a six and a nine-year-old, as of today, she turned nine, and I look at their elementary school and I see collaboration being introduced across so many public and private schools across the country, around the world. They were hit and had to react. Can you talk a little bit about how my view board and the ViewSonic solutions help collaboration around the education environments? Big, big initiative for ViewSonic and the timing of this pandemic will never be great, but we were able to support and help many districts around the US with the whole concept of remote learning right. and hybrid learning. And now as we see variations of districts throughout the US going back to school, we've been able to bridge the gap between hybrid and home and in-class learning mm -hmm. and making the teachers more empowered to be effective, whether their students are at home or in class. We have a platform under my view board that can make learning easier and more effective and engaging mm -hmm. no matter where you are geographically. And that doesn't solve the problem of having students in separate locations, right. but it helps the education of our students. Mm -hmm. And that's all we can really do as right. a technologist is make technology leverage teachers' strengths in whatever geography they're in. Right. And, and hopefully for parents, remove a little bit of stress that they have to be focused on the education more so than maybe they'd want to be. And it seems like the price points of ViewSonic is uh, at a point where it's affordable for almost any school district. Uh, there are grants, there are parent-teacher associations, there's tuition that can go towards these great collaboration tools. Can you talk a little bit about the affordability? And my second question is really around my view board. We have thousands of .edus that are part of the Internet Marketing Association. Yes. Do you have to be super technical to use a view board and how does it work? The success of Technology is about um, access to content and ease of use. Mm -hmm. And my view board has been able to bridge those two things and deliver a low cost solution. So we, we provide my view board free mm -hmm. when you purchase a ViewSonic 
screen. Oh, okay. um, we also have viewboard boxes that allow our new software technology to be bolted and attached to older technology like a projector. Right. So they can run the latest and greatest collaboration software with some technology that maybe hasn't been capitalized yet. But you talked a little bit about affordability. Right. Yes, there has been significant amount of grants that have been uh, issued to districts around the country. And they've been leveraging that to fulfill their classrooms with this interactive view board technology. Yeah. And we have grown as fast as we can get products in the country. As you know, we've been in a, in a pandemic state yes. where um, shipping containers are in short supply, where ICs are in short supply, and everything we can get, we're selling. Right. The demand for our product, because of the value proposition, because of the usability, because of the way they can take their old um, curriculum and transpose it into our platform, right. where they don't have to do any work, they right. want this so, mad, so much that the collaboration capabilities, the districts, the superintendents say, that's wonderful. Added on top of that, we see a significant amount of eSports building. Right. And so ViewSonic is unique in the market where not only can we provide a beautiful hybrid and remote and in-class solution with all sorts of configurations of glass, right. touch or non-touch, sure. we also provide a number of districts today with support on their eSports. Right. Where we're building labs, we're focusing on helping them um, with eSports and we've sponsored some teams. Wow. Uh, and some schools, and one locally here, which we'll be announcing uh, cool. probably shortly after uh, Impact this year. Okay. Excellent. Where we are not just a partner in learning in a formal sense. Sure. We're also helping technology right. as it relates to entertainment right. and you know teamwork and socialization right. and all this kind of stuff as it relates to esports, and it's been really fun. So we talked about enterprise, we talked about education. You opened the can of worms on esports. Gaming just seems to be this whole new medium. Uh, as a child, I played Nintendo and ColecoVision and Atari, and that seems so much. But then you just look at the modern web, and you look at all around social gaming, social gaming commerce, like Ink Games. You look at different platforms that are now requiring a node, like a ViewSonic display. Right. How does your display compete in that marketplace, and what differentiates you? Certainly, we compete. We have an elite series, which is the, the creme de la creme, uh, offering all the technologies that, that experienced gamers are looking for, competitive gamers are looking for. And the, the refresh rates, the sizes, the configurations, the RGB lights that light up when right. they're playing for, for some fun. Yeah. We offer a full line of premium gaming monitors that are out there that are the best in the business. Sure. And we're very excited that we've grown so much in that space. And we recognize, without a doubt, that entertainment in the home right. is as much a part of this whole hybrid work in the home. Um, and oftentimes, they'll use the same products mm -hmm. for both their gaming, yep. their entertainment, which right. is video and streaming, et cetera, as well as work. Right. So with people putting two monitors in their home, they put an XG, uh, elite series products in their right. home, and then they take a VX, put that in their home, and they collaborate and toggle between entertainment, work, and, and gaming. It's really a lot I'm, of fun. I'm predicting another new market for you, which is NFT digital art. I think you're gonna start seeing, I'm building a house right now, we actually have three ViewSonic displays that are going in it, to display our NFT art. And I think that mediums are born sometimes, because I would have never thought e-gaming 20 years ago would evolve to this potential trillion dollar marketplace that's global, and you're right. I mean, you're the one who taught me the term multiverse. You have one display that's used for multiple environments and you're seeing this in home work environments across the board. And you brought up the shortage of ICs. I think this is important to note as well. With the pandemic came this huge proliferation of purchasing of consumer electronics, be it um, you know mobile phones to computers, gaming instruments, these sort of things. And then there was this huge um, demand on components. And when there was a chip shortage, that created this uh, ripple effect that never got predicted in the global consumer electronics space. How, if any way, is ViewSonic tied to that? Um, and is there any sort of reassurances that you have on the display side that you're not caught up in that component drama? Uh, well, we certainly are in that drama. Okay. Um, but with logistic strategies and forecasting, 
and um, just managing scale like we have been for 30 years, right. we're pretty good at it. And we have been able to get a significant amount of supply, but we have been challenged, frankly, to fulfill all of the demand. Right. But we're filling it fast in such that we are growing dramatically right. in all of our categories. Sure. So I know that myself and my salespeople and my CEO would love to be growing more to mm -hmm. fulfill all that demand. Right. We're growing very quickly. Mm -hmm. We're getting supply every week. Um, containers are coming in, hundreds of containers are right, coming in right, all the time right. into the U.S. Sure. and globally. Right. And we feel very strong about where it's coming. We do believe that we are going to be emerging out of a great deal of the challenges we've had in the early part of next year. So I feel like um, the demand for display technology is going to continue. Right. And it's going to continue because every person, every company needs to either add more or upgrade mm -hmm. their display technology for resolutions, for right. brightness, for color, for all sorts of technologies. Coming back to the home and coming back to uh, your comment about leveraging your syndicated art to show and display on your, on your screens, right. this is one market that is adding to the demand for displays. Right. In terms of being able to grab this trifecta, which is the ability to stream content the ability to access content, and then the ability to display content. Right, right. And these three things are coming together affordably. Right. And I do believe that many of our partners out there are going to be getting more and more of these kinds of opportunities from ViewSonic mm -hmm. to allow them to take content and display it in their home, wherever it is, so they can enjoy the world that is out there right. by not even having to be out there. And let, let, let's hit on that. So like a lot of people know ViewSonic as a display company, but you guys have also other products that go around projection and such. Can you walk us through a little sure. bit of that? We have five pillars and uh, our diversified efforts over the last 10 years has been very, very successful for us. So we do have projector products, which are both set for home theater, for portability and ultra portability for anybody that wants to take entertainment on the road or work on the road and display it, mm -hmm. you know, for a presentation. Mm -hmm. And we have in office installation projectors as well. So that's one, one of our pillars, which is growing worldwide. And ViewSonic is now the number one LED uh, projector company. Oh, wow. Very excited about that that's on great. the DLP side. I want to make sure I'm clear on that. Um, and then the other piece is the view board displays, the interactive touch, which we've talked a lot about that comes along with my view board software. Um, our non-touch displays, big screen displays, are proliferating. We have 43 inch all the way up to 98 inch. Wow. Plus we have 135 and 165 uh, LED direct view, which is a beautiful display for all sorts of in, um, in office lobbies, uh, right. conference rooms, mm -hmm. and, and complements touch. So you can have yep. a touch screen in the middle right. and non-touch around. That's so we nice. have those. Those are all connected uh, with our MyViewBoard software as well because they have built-in media players. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, we have a module that we just launched for that, which is called um, Manager Advance. Mm -hmm. And Manager Advance allows from one location, you can control all of your attached large screen displays right. and manage those devices on, off. You can send messages out if you have an emergency message, a happy birthday message through your entire network nice. of displays, which is a lot of fun. Right. Of course, another platform is our monitor platform, which is a huge array of, of, yeah. of different uh, monitors that we have out there. And then lastly, we have our software platform. Mm -hmm. And our MyViewBoard software is developed by ourselves, and we have a team of software engineers. That's and awesome we get billions of data points on how they're being used and what we need to do next for our next release. Sure. Uh, we're leveraging advanced uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning right. to make sure we're evolving that software because collaboration is about how your software is being used, exactly. how it's leveraged, and then what do you have to do different? to make it easier to use. And I think that's one of the core advantages of USonic is that they're using their actual users and they're predicting where the platform needs to go and they're building around that. That's Absolutely. fantastic. Because if you have that software base and you have the hardware nodes, you've really kind of hit it on both sides. Yeah. So we've talked a little bit about everything ViewSonic and what's currently happening. You, you were very proactive last year around pandemic and the growth of your business has been significant. You've also helped 
a lot of school districts, you've been very involved with your community as a brand. You know, we've had thousands of brands come in and out our door, and we know those that really care about the communities that they serve. Can you tell us a little bit about the philanthropic side of USONIC and all the things that you guys have supported uh, recently around schools and, and, and things to, to that nature? We are very proud of that, and thank you for asking that question. Our, our, our give back uh, mentality is a, is a good sort of view of the culture of the people within ViewSonic. Um, really, technology is, is exciting and ever-changing, but when it helps people, um, be better, right. then we want to help. And we were able last year to support several schools in underprivileged areas, uh, get my view boards and get on that my view board software to allow them to begin to learn like they're going to be seeing technology when they graduate and want to get a job. Right. And it's really a nice platform for them to do that. So we've done that. And well, as well, there's a lot of STEM students out there that are in these underprivileged areas that need technology. So we uh, gifted many, many uh, Raspberry Pi platform products, That's right. thousands and thousands of them, to districts in right. Orange County, sure. in, in areas that are struggling, to allow these really aspiring young geniuses to have a chance to program and learn about technology uh, that they otherwise wouldn't be getting from the school boards. Awesome. Um, just trying to, you know, make their budgets meet. Um, companies need to help. Right. And that was our, our main stance last year right. in terms of trying to give back and leverage um, you know, our soul and our heart about our next generation, right? giving them a yep. chance to be successful right. and have ultimately more than we did. And I think that as, as both business leaders and parents, if we can have the next generation have more, learn more, and be better than we are today, right. then we've accomplished our goal. And I encourage all the members of the Internet Marketing Association, our board included, to always think about the communities that you serve and the philanthropic programs you can create around your product, your services. We can all contribute. And as we wrap up, Jeff, we've talked a lot about the world of displays, technology, ViewSonic. Can you, can you give us some insight into the future? What are some of the projects that you're working on? Uh, what are the things you're allowed to talk about that's exciting and breaking around Impact 21? Big opportunity to answer uh, that question, but I can't say a lot of the stuff. But what I'm excited about mostly is the progress we made last year in leveraging change and figuring out how our company can be continuing to progress from a device company to a solutions company and accelerate that solution side of it makes the usability of our technology better and better and easier and easier for businesses, for government, mm -hmm. and for education. Right. And I will tell you that I believe that the, the cost to provide a great solution will continue to move in the right direction. So the affordability for everybody to engage in technology. You know, we've always thought about the display as the window to the world and the window to your computer. It makes your computer come to life. Well, now it makes your phone come to life. It makes the internet come to life. Mm -hmm. And our displays and our solutions are evolving yeah. to put content on these screens. Not just worry about the screens themselves, right. but put content on the screens easy, fast, high resolution, and connect people, both in the office and around the world more simply and more easily so that you can be productive, mm -hmm. you can be comfortable with our ergonomics, and you can be happy and excited when right. you switch right. from work mode to entertainment mode, which seems to be toggling more and more and more sure. as, as we, we have this sort of hybrid space. Right. We have over 100,000 professionals registered for today's event, and I'm curious, Jeff, uh, although we have a, a huge database of small to mid-sized businesses, we also have enterprise leaders, and recently one of our enterprise uh, organizations swapped all their monitors for ViewSonic. Is it challenging for an enterprise to come to you and say, hey, I have 2,000 workstations, I need ViewSonic, uh, or is it, is it pretty seamless? You know, we live in a, in a very uh, competitive space, and every enterprise has uh, a great deal of perspective on what they need. Right. And oftentimes, it, the, the challenge for us is not for them to come to us. When and if an enterprise comes to us, we have a wide breadth of products that can help their business. Mm -hmm. Help them not only from a cost perspective, help them from an environment 
perspective. We have built our packaging to be lower cost uh, of, of disposal because we want to make sure that the cost is not just about the acquisition of the monitor, right. it's about the recycling of the products that they're shipped in, mm -hmm. as well as the ease of how they're set up. So we set up the monitors where you can quickly, with a click of a button, put the stand on the monitor, right. the monitor goes on the desk, boom, you're done. So for us, we can provide a tremendous amount of variations for that enterprise environment. Right. Whether they're looking for Adobe-based color monitors, whether they're looking for ergonomics, whether they're looking for size and shape, sure. or they're looking for a heavy cost for a call, call center or something like that. So it's really easy for us when they come to us. The hard part, of course, is us trying to acquire new logos in the environment, right? right? Um, and, and putting that ViewSonic solution out there is what impact does sure. and all the audience does for us is say, hey, ViewSonic's got some stuff that I never knew about. Right. We should check them out. Absolutely. And so we're leveraging digital marketing very, very aggressively. We're engaging in social media. We're doing all the things necessary right. to further create demand and we leverage that demand and fulfill that demand through partners. And we covered our conference this year is, is really around the, the umbrella theme of marketing to a new world. Right. Half of that is the return work environment. The other half is all the gens, right? You've got Z, alpha, everything, right? Yes. Do you find with your product that you just have a different outcome based on these different generations? And, and how are you adapting to that? Certainly content and digital marketing and intelligence is really what we're trying to do. I mean, today's marketers are data driven. Um, you know, we, lo we look at intent scores, we look at all sorts of different um, drivers that make a generation, an individual interested in a piece of technology right. and try to put that piece of ViewSonic in front of them that's relevant. And I think um, all marketers are engaging heavily in digital these days, but there are more tools popping up every day and becoming a cookie-less society is going right. to change things. Sure. But there will be workarounds, and there are already workarounds that right. we all have to engage in. And I think the, the key for what we've seen is every generation has a slightly different um, trigger that makes them either like something they see or dislike something they see. And so that closer we can personalize a bit on the internet to right. make it humanistic and, right. and authentic, yes. uh, the better it's gonna be. And you know we're a group of marketers. Tell us about brand, because ViewSonic has, it's a timeless brand. It's been around for, for generations, for decades. How have you been able to sustain a business through the changing landscape of generations? Just curious, from a marketer's point of view. We uh, believe that the, it's an always constant evolving reality to try to put your brand in front of people. But one thing that we've been consistent on with our brand is delivering performance with a value. Right. And again, making that statement relevant to all the different pieces of right. the puzzle, sure. businesses, healthcare, enterprise, finance, education, consumers, gamers right. versus, you know, uh, anybody else, right? We, we market to everybody. So uh, again, the critical component for us in our branding is to stay true to the model of performance and value. Right. Um, we care about our partners. We care about our consumers. We offer very good VIP service and we keep those things whole. But as we wrap relevance and we wrap creative and colors and campaigns around right. that right. to create excitement right. with new generations and new genres of consumption of technology, we still maintain the core. So right. I think, you know, in this crazy world of fast paced change, we do have to keep some things solid. Right. And, and the brand promise is that core for us. And we've been very successful in doing that, I believe. Think about your own business, your own organization, the great things that you're doing and the people you know in your life, like Jeff, uh, because that's what has helped lift us and to be able to present this conference to you. We are so thankful for this partnership. We wish you continued success. And thank you for all that you do for the Internet Marketing Association. And we'll come back at you soon. Thank you. Thank you.